And, and you mentioned dopamine there, Dr. Amen. How does dopamine actually factor into to a lack of focus in ADHD? What's actually going on in the brain to, to bring that effect? So what we see, we scan people, we do a study called SPEC that looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how the brain works. And we do two scans, one at rest and one when you concentrate. And when you don't have enough dopamine, when you try to concentrate, your brain drops in activity. And what that means is the harder you try, the worse it gets. And we all have only so much store of dopamine available. People who have ADHD actually have less. And so you find that they're always doing things to try to increase their own dopamine so they can be excitement seeking. You know, it's like, why do people jump out of perfectly good airplanes? You have to ask yourself that question. Or they can be conflict seeking they like poke at other people and they play this game i call let's have a problem um they're always seeking more dopamine they're at higher risk for substance abuse in one study from harvard 52 percent of people who have adhd untreated will end up with a substance use issue that's a problem and they often struggle in school because a lot of school is boring. A lot of school doesn't have its own sort of intrinsic excitement, intrinsic dopamine. And it's, it's hard for them, which is why I always tell them, you need to go into a profession that can support you, but you love because love is a drug. Love is dopamine in many ways. Interesting. So that's a... A natural way to, to sustain dopamine is to find a job that's rewarding. You mentioned substance abuse there. That, that brings to mind, I know that many of the, the medications used to treat ADHD are amphetamines, and then there's Ritalin, I understand, falls into another type of stimulant that's used to, to treat ADHD. You mentioned before that there's, there's two types that respond well to medication. Overall, though, how do you balance that, the, the potential for addiction or other ill effects from medication and the, the potential benefits? Uh, how, how have you dealt with that? Well, I think it's very important to have a really good assessment and have a healthcare person you trust that you actually tell the truth to, to mitigate against that. So I find when I diagnose it properly and I educate my patients, there's very little inappropriate use of the medication. In fact, if you overshoot the dose with kids or adults who have ADHD, they don't like how they feel. It sort of flattens how they feel. I have a daughter who has ADHD and she had the hyperactive form um, and the medicine was a godsend for her. But if I increased it too much, I could just see it flatten her personality and she didn't like it. Um, and you go, well, why is that? <laughs> You're giving somebody an, an, a stimulant. And because you have to dial in the dose in a thoughtful way. The abuse dosages of these medications are much higher than the typical treatment dosages. I see. And how can patients or how can parents ensure that their, their child is, is properly diagnosed with the specific type of ADHD that they have is diagnosed so that they can get the, the appropriate treatment? Well, and this is sort of the crazy thing about psychiatry. It's, it's the only medical profession that never looks at the organ it treats. So think about it. Cardiologists look, neurologists look, orthopedic doctors look, Every other medical specialist looks at the organ it treats, psychiatrist guess. And I've been trying to change my profession for the last 30 years. I'm like, come on, if you don't look, you don't know. You then begin to assume, oh, you have ADHD. But very few people have one psychiatric diagnosis. 
it's actually for people who come to see us on average, they have 4.2. So it's usually ADHD and depression, ADHD and anxiety, ADHD and obsessive compulsive disorder. And if, you know, at least for a practice like ours, it's very rare for people to just have one thing. And then it gets really tricky with medicine because if you treat the ADD, you actually may make them more anxious or more obsessive or more irritable. And so I advocate we should look at the brain before we go about trying to change it. Another thing that's really important, I, I hate the term mental illness because it shames people, it's stigmatizing, and it's wrong. These are brain health issues. And what that means, if you have ADHD, you really need to go to bed on time. You really need to like leave the dopamine dumpers um, alone, like constantly on your phone or social media or video games. It's so important to think of ADHD or depression or anxiety disorders. These are brain health issues. So I have to eat right for my brain. I have to exercise for my brain. And when you think of it as mental illness, it's like, oh, you have this, take this drug. When you think of it as brain health, you really start caring about your brain and then optimizing it with all the other strategies like diet, exercise, sleep. You've touched on a number of things there that I'd like to explore further, like the detoxification effect of sleep and also food. Food is increasingly identified as a factor in people's mental health and behavior. To what proportion, if you can put a proportion to it, of patients would you say is food, what they're eating, a factor in, in their ADHD? Well, there's this fascinating study from Holland where they took 300 ADHD children, put them on an elimination diet. So they basically eliminated processed foods. And at the end of three months, 70% did not now meet the criteria for having ADHD. I think food is huge. And as a parent of uh, children and grandchildren with ADHD, I always think fix food first, fix food first because if you feed them properly, your brain is 2% of your body's weight, but uses 25% of the calories you consume. So if you have the standard American diet, think Taco Bell, you're not gonna think right because it doesn't have the nutrients you need. And I'm just picking on Taco Bell because I saw the World Series and had like six commercials last night. And, but, you know, any fast food restaurant or any packaged food, processed foods, we were never meant to eat these foods. And the more ultra processed foods you have, the higher incidence of ADHD, depression, and dementia you're going to have.